Okay. So uh, this evening we are continuing our exploration of the different types of forces which can provide or which can act as centripetal forces. So basically we are looking at the different phases of centripetal force. Now, one of the forces which is a very good of centripetal force is tension, the tension in a rope. Uh, if you're not speaking, please, can you switch off your microphone? So the tension in a rope is a good example of a centripetal force. Now, tension on itself can... If you're not speaking, Harrison, comma. Can you switch off your microphone? So, the tension itself, if you have, for example, as shown in uh, one of the figures which we have down here, if you have a mass attached to a string, then this mass is forced to move in a circular path like this, whether it's vertically or horizontally. But if you force a mass, this mass, which is shown by the orange uh, here, you force this mass to move in a circular path like this. While this mass is attached to a string, then you are at the center here. Then in this case, the tension in the rope is going to be what's going to be providing the centripetal force. The tension will force this mass to continue to move in a circle. So if you have this kind of a scenario where a mass is being forced to move vertically or it's being forced to move horizontally in a circle, then in that case, your tension is what is providing the centripetal force. That's what this equation here is showing, that the centripetal force in that case is going to be provided by the, the tension. So uh, we basically assume that if it's vertical, fine, but on a horizontal surface, the, the, the mass is going to be moving in a circular horizontal surface and it's not going to be inclined in such a way. However, that can only be the case probably for, thing, for masses which are very, very small. But if a mass has got any amount of significant weight, that's not going to be the case. So the mass is just is going to use its weight to incline the the rope, and what you are basically going to have in such a case where your mass has got an appreciable amount, your object has got an appreciable amount of mass, you're going to end up with something like this. So this is going to be your rope, like that. So your tension is going to be like that. This is going to be your rope. Then your object is going to be there. Then it's going to move in this kind of circular path. Like that so that's how your object is going to be moving of course this might be an exaggeration depending on how heavy or depending on the mass of that particular object so you might end up having a situation where you are here this is a rope where the tension is acting then this particular object has got its mass its weight pointing down then the the force which is keeping the object in a circular path is not completely the tensile force, but it is this bit here. It is the X component of the tensile force. So if the rope makes an angle theta here with the vertical bit here, then what you're going to end up with, the X component or the horizontal component of this tension is going to be T sine theta, and the vertical component is going to be T cos theta, like this. So basically, this is what you're going to end up with. The T cos theta is going to be balanced. The T cos theta is going to make sure that this mass does not go down, it does not go up. So the T cos theta is going to be equal to the weight. So there will be no acceleration up or down like that. So the only force which is going to be left forcing your mass to continue moving in a circle is going to be this one T sine theta. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this T sine theta is the one 
which is going to be providing the acceleration so you end up with uh what the situation which we have up here again i will need to here fc is equals to t sine theta uh, fc is equals to the tensor force multiplied by sine theta again uh, i will need to rewrite this properly so that we can see a good expression of what the velocity is going to be and other stuff like that okay so let's look at quickly let's look at some examples of this same thing so here example number four uh you have a 200 gram object tied to the end of a cord and weld in a horizontal circle of radius 1.2 yes okay Hmm. I don't know what's happening. Ah, uh, just a minute. I'm trying to admit, but it doesn't seem to be responding. Let me stop sharing a bit. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure exactly how it's happening. It's like my screen has frozen a bit. What is the acceleration or what is the centripetal acceleration which this particular object is undergoing? For you to find centripetal acceleration, what you need in this case is we have this angular velocity, which is three revolutions per second. We also have this radius, which is 1.2 meters. So in our case, the mass of the object is 200 grams and this grams have to be changed into kgs so you end up with 0 0.2 kgs then the radius is 1.2 meters that's fine but this velocity is in the revolutions per second so we need to change this velocity uh angular velocity from revolutions per second we need to change it into into radius per second so that's going to be uh three revolutions per second that's going to be three revolutions divided by one second multiplied by this convention factor two pi radians divided by one revolution so the revolution when this revolution which you have here is going to cancel out with this revolution so you end up with 3 times 2 pi which is going to give you 18.8 radians then divided by this second so you end up with this so 3 revolutions per second is the same as 18.8 radians per second so once you have your angular velocity in radians per second now you can work out your acceleration so your acceleration is going to be your angular acceler centripetal acceleration is going to be the radius of the circular path multiplied by how fast this particular object is going around in a circle, which is the angular velocity in radians per second. So that's going to be 18.8. So you're going to have 1.2 meters multiplied by 18.8 radians per second. And this is going to give you an acceleration of 424 meters per second squared. This is... A quite large acceleration and basically what he's trying to show you here is that when objects are turning they are they usually undergo a large amount of acceleration and as you can see in meters here so as yeah in meters per second square any question on how you find the acceleration if you are given the radius and also you're given the angular velocity in the revolutions per second so you need to turn you, you need to change that into meters per second squared into meters per second are we clear okay next now that we have our acceleration then 
we can find we can try to find the tension and the reason why we can find the tension is because the tension is what's providing the centripetal force so instead of directly finding the tension first we find what the centripetal force is whatever the centripetal force is that is what the tension is so the centripetal force fc is going to be equal to the mass of the object going around in a circle multiplied by the centripetal acceleration so in this case the mass of the object is 0 0.2 kgs multiplied by the acceleration which is 424 meters per second squared and that's going to give us a centripetal acceleration a centripetal force of 85 newtons so in our case since the tension is the one providing the centripetal force so we end up with fc equals to ft which is a tension so we end up with tension ft being equals to 85 meters 85 newtons so the tension is in this case the tension is the one which is providing the centripetal force so our tension is 85 newtons the same as the centripetal force are we clear so this is when your object is going around in a circle but on a, in a horizontal circle is it clear to everyone Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. It's clear, sir. Next, we look at an example where our the circle in which the object is going around is not completely flat, not horizontal. There is some kind of uh, weight stuff which is happening, which is what we have here. So we have a bulb, heavy, it's made of metal, so it's not going to be completely flat like in the other example which you've just looked at. So there's going to be some depression the, 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 like this. So the tension is going to be in this rope, but what's going to be causing uh, the centripetal force is not going to be the tension itself, but it's going to be a component of the tension. So there is a part of the tension which is pointing in this direction. This part of the tension pointing in this direction, that is Ft sine theta, which is Ft sine 30. This is the one which is causing the tension in this, in this particular direction. And also, there is a component of the tension, which is what shown here, Ft cos theta, F, Fc cos 30. This is the one which is pulling this particular bulb up. And the weight of the bulb is the one trying to take it down like that. So in this case, when you're stretching like this, the tension is being provided by the horizontal component or the X component of the tension. In this case, the tension is a force. Force is a vector. So you are finding the x component of the tension, which is this. You're also finding the y component of the tension, which the y component is the one trying to lift the bulb up, while the x component is the one trying to make sure that this particular bulb uh, stays in a circular path. This force here is this bit here. This one is Ft cos theta. This other one here in this particular direction is Ft sin theta. So in this particular example, uh, as shown in figure five, uh, yes, is there a question? I have a question on, mm -hmm. yes, uh, on uh, components, like why is it that in the horizontal component is signed then, uh, in why, 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 why direction is caused? It's because of, it's supposed to be in horizontal, but, uh, no, 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 it's because of how this angle is. We are using this 30 here. If you use this 30 here, then this bit is going to be a hypotenuse. Then this side is going to be adjacent. Then this side is going to be opposite. If you use this 30. Okay, all right. okay. But if you are using this angle here, so this one will be 60, de 60 degrees. So then this side is going to be cos, then that side, so it's going to be Ft cos 60 degrees, this side is going to be Ft sin 60 degrees. The reason why it's like this is because of the angle here, which is a 30 degrees, which is what he is using. So it's just a matter of geometry. Any other question? Before we proceed? If you have a question, please ask.
Because remember, there is a quiz coming and also at the end of the day, at the end of the year, there will be an exam. So you have to understand properly why certain things are like that. It's not always the case that the X component is always going to have cos and the Y component is always going to have sine. It's not always going to be that, that way. That decision of cos and sine it depends on what angles you are using. So in this case, for the angle being using that angle of 30 degrees, then things change a bit. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So in our case, this uh, FT sine 30 degrees is the one which is going to provide the centripetal force. So the horizontal component of the tension. So uh, as shown in figure 5, a, a, a ball B is fastened to one end of the, of the 24 centimeter string and the other end is held fixed at point Q. The ball wheels in a horizontal circle yes find the speed of the yeah, just on the from finishing uh, how do we assign these ratios is there a range of uh, uh, like a range of uh, angles given for us to determine which ratio to assign the sign ratios and the cosine it depends on what you have been given here we have been given 30 degrees you have been given this and what if that angle and what if what what if it were 60? Then it's 60. Then uh, which one do we use? Uh, like, I mean, what we've been knowing as in, I don't know whether it's a wrong assumption. Uh, around the horizontal axis, it's always constant. I've explained this, that it depends on what angle you choose. If you use this state, can you see my, 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 my case? Sir? Yes, sir, okay. This is 30 degrees. Here is 90 degrees. So 30 plus 90 gives you one thing uh one uh, how much is that 120 this a triangle the angles in the triangle are is it 180 180 degrees all the angles in the triangle they add up to 180 degrees so if this is 30 this is 90 then this is going to be 60. if you choose to use 60 that's up to you you always have a choice what what you want to do and how you want to work out the problem so if you have got a 30 degrees here, then you are comfortable with using this angle here as the 60 degrees, which is here. That's also your choice. Things are not written in stone. So you have got more than one way of working out the same problem. All right, sir. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, so if there's no question uh, like that, so find the, find the speed of the ball uh, find the speed of the ball in its circular path if the string makes an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical. So, yeah, uh, so we start with this bit. So you've got your centripetal force Fc is equal to the mass of the ball, the velocity multiplied, divide, uh, velocity squared divided by the radius. But in this case, the centripetal force Fc is being provided by this. The tension multiplied by sine theta, like this. So in that case, you end up with this. You end up with mv squared of r equals to ft sine theta. This is what you have. Now, the mass of the bob, are we given the mass? No, we are not given the mass. So there's a bunch of stuff we don't know. We do not know what the mass is. We don't know what the velocity is. We know the radius. We do not know what the tension is. And of course, we know the angle, which is 30 degrees. So basically, there are three things in this expression which you have come up with here mv squared is equal to r mv squared divided by r is equal to ft sine theta there are three quantities which you do not know you don't know the mass of the ball you don't know the velocity you do not know the tension is that clear yes so if you have got so many things which you don't know you have got one equation you have got three things which you don't know you probably need another equation somewhere. And we're going to get that equation from here by using this information here, this bit here. You've got this component of the tension, the Ft cos theta, the component, the vertical component of the tension, which is balancing the weight of the bob. Have you seen this? 
the weight of the bob is in black, the vertical component is this gray bit. Ft cos theta and this. Now, this is such that the Ft cos theta exactly balances the weight so that this particular weight doesn't go down and it also doesn't go up. So Ft cos theta is equal to the weight of this particular thing. Are we clear? So the acceleration of the bob in the y direction is equal to zero. So there's no acceleration in the y direction. The reason why there's no acceleration in the y direction is because the horizontal component of the tension is pulling the bob up with the same amount of force which is equal to the weight of the bob. So we have this. The summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. There's no acceleration, so we have this. If we choose this bit pointing up to be positive, so we're going to have Ft cos theta minus the weight of the bob. This is going to be equal to zero. There's no acceleration. So if that's the case, fine. Then we get this bit to the other end. You end up having Ft cos uh, 30 degrees equals to this bit. So you end up having... We know your the weight of the bob is just mg, so you end up having this Ft uh, cos 30 degrees, that's going to be mg. So you can work out the tension from this bit. So the tension is going to be equals to, so the tension is going to be equals to mg divided by cos theta. So we have found, remember we had three things which you didn't know. We did not know the tension, we didn't know the mass, we did not know the velocity. But now we have found an expression of the tension in terms of the mass, which we do not know. So with this bit like that, now we can substitute this tension, mg cos theta, we can substitute it here, where we don't know the mass, we don't know the velocity, we also don't know the tension. But you have found the tension in terms of one of these physical quantities, so that we can get rid of the tension for the time being, because clearly we don't really need to know what the tension is, as you are going to find out. If you want to find it out, fine, you can find it out after you have found out the other stuff. But we really don't need to know it, as you are going to find out, if you want to find out what the velocity is. So you're going to have uh, the mass multiplied by the velocity squared divided by r equals to whatever the tension is, then sine 30 degrees. So if you substitute for this mg cos theta, like I've done here, so mg cos theta multiplied by sine 30 degrees, so you end up with uh, the mass velocity squared divided by r equals to mg uh, sine theta divided by cos theta. So you have this bit here, sine theta divided by cos theta. That is some ratio of sine to cosine, and we know what that is. That's a tangent. So you end up with m, m uh, v squared of r equals to the weight multiplied by uh, this bit, which is a tangent. So you end up with mv squared of r equals to the mass multiplied by g multiplied by tan theta. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, if you're trying to find the velocity, the first thing you notice is that velocity does not really depend on what the tension is. We didn't have to find the tension. We got rid of the tension. But the other thing you don't need is actually, as you will find out, there is a mass this side, there is mass this side. So on both sides of this equation, there is mass. So if you cancel out the mass on both sides, you remain with only v squared divided by r equals to g tan theta, tan 30 degrees. Then when you multiply both sides by r, which is the radius, you end up with v squared is equals to g r tan 30. Basically, this 30 is the angle. Okay? Next, you take the square root on both sides, you end up with this bit. You end up with this expression. V is equals to G R tan theta. Tan 30 degrees. Then you can work out what the velocity is. V is equals to, uh, G is 9.8. The radius is... Now, this radius, R, is not the length of the string. This radius R is the radius of the circular path. The R we are looking at here, it's not the length of this string. It is this radius, the radius of this circular path in which the bob is moving. Is that clear? Yes, sir. 
yeah that's that particular radius so that's going to be you can get that 24 24 time uh 24 sine 30 so you should get that 24 sine 30. excuse me sir yes but the rope is given in centimeters so are we just supposed to multiply the change it to meters change it to meters So you should change it to meters. So I don't know if someone has a calculator. Uh, 0 0.24 times sine 30. 0 0.12. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 okay. Which is what you have here. 0 0.12. Is that clear? Okay. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry to take you back, but I didn't quite understand how you managed to uh, how you use the two equations. How we use which two equations? Um, the one we we equated uh, the weight. There's a first one here. Uh, you have seen this one? There is this equation here, which gives us the centripetal force uh, mv squared uh, divided by r equals to ft sine theta. The problem with this equation, which I've explained, is that one, the mass, you do not know the mass. The other thing you do not know is the velocity v. You don't know the velocity v. The other quantity you do not know is the tension ft. You do not know the tension ft. So in this one equation which you have here, there are three things which you do not know. Are we clear? So if there are three things which you do not know, then you need to find some other equations so that you can make this thing simpler. Okay? Otherwise, you can't make a lot of progress. And the way to proceed is when you look at this bit, the vertical component of the velocity, of the tension, Ft cos theta. Ft cos theta is pointing up, uh, the weight is pointing down. So with this expression and this particular object continues to move in this particular circle like that. It's not going up, it's not going down. The reason why it's not doing that is because Ft cos theta and the weight, they are balanced. As much as they are pointing in different directions, but they are equal to each other. So we use this information to get rid of one of the things we do not know. And we are trying to get rid of the tension. We get rid of the tension. Okay, so in this case, so we end up with, we work out things. So the, when we add all the forces in the y direction, there is no acceleration in the y direction. So we have Ft cos theta minus the weight which is pointing down equals to zero. Since there is no acceleration, there is a mass, yes, but there is no acceleration. Because there's no acceleration, mass times zero acceleration, it just gives you zero. That's what, this is This is the zero you're seeing here. Because there's zero acceleration along the y direction. So if there's zero acceleration, then this bit, we can take it to the other side. So you end up with this. You end up with Ft because 30 degrees equals to the weight. But the weight of this particular object is just mg, which is this. Therefore, we end up with Ft cos theta is equals to mg. There are two things you don't know. There is a tension we don't know. There is a mass we don't know. However, we can express the tension in terms of the weight, which is what you have done here. We end up having Ft is equal to mg cos theta. With this, now that you have got a neat expression for the tension, we get this tension, we substitute it back into this expression where we don't. We have got three things you don't know. We have got the mass which you don't know, there is a velocity which we don't know, which is what you are looking for. The question is asking us for the velocity. So we can get rid of the tension. Since the question is talking about the velocity, we can get rid of the tension. We can also get rid of the mass because if there's a way of getting rid of the mass, we can do that. So that we only remain with the velocity. That's what the whole exercise is about. Finding out what the velocity is supposed to be when this thing is moving in a circle. 
So we have got the tension here. So we'll get this expression which we have found. Bit here. We substitute it back here. We substitute it here. So we end up with mv squared divided by r equals to mg divided by cos 30 degrees multiplied by sine 30 degrees like that. So we end up having uh, mv squared divided by r equals to mg sine 30 degrees cos 30 degrees like that. This is some ratio sine 30 divided by cos 30. That's a tangent. So you can factor out the mg. So you end up with having mv squared over r divided multiplied by equals to mg multiplied by this but this bit is just your tangent your tan 30 degrees so you end up having this you end up having mv squared of r equals to uh, mg tan 30 degrees now you see here there is a mass there's mass this side there's mass this side so if there's mass on both sides you cancel out so when you cancel out you remain with v squared of r is equals to g tan 30. Basically, what this is showing you is that you actually never need to know what the mass of these particular things are. There is no need in knowing what the mass is. You can still find the velocity without knowing the mass. So you don't need to know what the tension is. You don't need to know what the mass is supposed to be. You can still find the velocity. And that's exactly what these things are trying to show. So when you multiply both sides by R, so you end up having V squared is equal to G, acceleration due to gravity, R, tan 30. Then take the square root on both sides, then you end up with this bit. You end up with V is equals to G R than 30 degrees. Then we substitute for R, our R in this case, this R, like we have said, is not the length, excuse me, it's not the length of the string, but it's the length, it's, it's the radius of the circular track which this particular object is moving, which you can get from the length of the string, and you multiply by the sine of the angle this particular thing makes. So in this case, our velocity v becomes 0 0.82 meters per second. So this is our velocity v. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Very yes, much. sir. Okay. Any question? One of the things you notice so far with centripetal motion, we have been cancelling out everywhere we have gone. We have been cancelling out the mass. I don't know if you have noticed that. With a roundabout thing, we cancelled out the masses. With a satellite, we cancelled out the masses. With these things, we cancel. We have just been cancelling out the masses. What that tells you is that your velocity when you're going through a circle never depends on the mass. It depends on other things. So it doesn't matter whether it's a, like I said, whether it's a bicycle or you can't, well, it's a bicycle or it's a motorcycle or it's a vids just because your thing is small doesn't mean you can you can you can go around in a circle faster than the other cars no because that thing your velocity does not depend on mass and these are the kind of questions you find in a quiz where they ask you when an object is going around in a circle its velocity doesn't depend on what so they will tell you radius they will tell you stuff. One of the things that it really doesn't depend on is mass. The velocity is independent of the mass of an object. Are we clear? Good. Another type of circular motion is one which is provided by the normal force when you have with a rod which is banked. So basically, a banked rod is a rod where one of the surfaces has been, the rod has been tilted like this at an angle, theta. This is done by engineers so that they can keep the rod, so they can keep the vehicle on the rod by providing a centripetal force. A centripetal force which is based on the normal force. Okay. Now, how does it work? Well, first, uh, you have an angle theta here, which is what's providing whatever it is you have here, which is what's providing the banking theta there. Next, this car, as you can see, has got weight. The weight of this car 
always points downwards. So the weight of the car is pointing down. Then you have the normal force. The normal force is always 90 degrees to the surface. This bit here, N. The normal force is always 90 degrees to the surface. So in this case, uh, there is this angle here. There is this force here. This is the force which is keeping the car on the road. And this force is provided by a component of the centripetal force. Now, I don't know if, how can I, um, how can I, I don't know how I can show this properly, but this angle theta here, which is the angle of the banking, this angle theta here, which is the angle of the banking, is the same as this angle here between the normal force and this straight line connecting the weight like this. I don't know if you can see this. So this angle, which is a theta, this angle theta is the same as the angle of the banking. So if this, this is the same as that, then you can find out from this normal force, so in this case with this angle theta here, you can find out what, how much of this normal force is balancing the weight. That's going to be uh, cos theta multiplied by the normal force and how much of this normal force is pointing in this direction. That's going to be um, uh, N, the normal force multiplied by sine theta. If as shown, if this angle theta here is the same as this, then this weight is going to be equals to this vertical component of the normal force, which is going to be the normal force multiplied by cos theta. Then the centripetal force is going to be provided by this bit here, which is pointing this direction, which is going to be the normal force multiplied by sine theta. That's what you end up, yeah, you have here. Centripetal force, is being provided by the normal force multiplied by sine theta. This other side here, uh, the normal force multiplied by cos theta is equal to the weight. So again, a similar calculation can be done to what we have just done for the for the other stuff. So, in our case here, the centripetal force Fc is being provided by the normal force multiplied by sine theta. Are we clear? Yes, sir. We can go through the same process which we did previously. From uh, with example number five, say, uh, and we have got a, example number five: a curve, a curve of radius, a curve of radius thirty meters, is to be banked so that a car may make the turn at a speed of 13 meters per second without depending on friction. What must be the slope of the curve? So in this case, there are, of course, since the road is going to be banked, then there's going to be centripetal force which is being provided by the normal force times sine theta. So your centripetal force, in this case, Fc, is going to be equal to the mass multiplied by velocity squared divided by R. And your centripetal force is this uh, Fn sine theta. So that's your centripetal force. Now I think we should I should have done it the same way I did the other one. So we end up having uh, this bit. So the centripetal force equals to this. But then also we have this other bit here. We have this other bit, this expression here, where the weight, uh, the weight of the car pointing down. So I need to. Re that's why I was saying that I need to rewrite this. I need to rewrite this bit here for equation number six, 
the way I did this, the way I wrote this, the way I wrote this. So I need to rewrite it like that so that things are more systematic than what was previously done. Okay. So these bits here is what's providing the centipedal force. Uh, and this is the the vertical component of the normal force pointing up, which is balancing the weight of the car like that. So, uh, so what have I done here? So you have got Fn equals to cos theta uh, equals to mg. Yes. From this bit is from here. This Fn cos theta, then mg. So the car stays. Uh, on the road uh, now I I think I prematurely do this this division thing it's, it's okay but I think it's not the best way to do things because what I was supposed to do is uh, I was supposed to create an expression for the normal force Fn I was supposed to Fn is equals to mg divided by cos theta so I was supposed to find an expression of Fn which is equals to mg divided by cos theta then i come and substitute the fn here after substituting the fn there then i would basically end up with some expression uh similar to what i had here so i need to do that i would end up with an expression sim to so i the fn i substitute it there then i would end up with something which looks like this Okay, then after that, I would, of course, get a tangent and also something would have to be cancelled out. So anyway, I prematurely do things in a different way, but I'll need to rewrite this so that it's more consistent with whatever it is. So you end up with this. Tan theta is equal to Fc uh, divided by Mg. But we know that uh, Fc, which is the centipedal for, uh, force is equal to mv squared divided by r so somewhere the m's are going to cancel out so again even in this case you don't know you don't need to know what the mass is supposed to be so the m's will cancel out after the m's cancel out then you're going to remain with uh, some tan theta this side and your velocity whatever it is v squared uh, on top you're going to remain with r you're also going to remain with g like that so in this case you end up having tan theta is equal to v squared g r then of course you can now work out what your your theta is supposed to be like from this thing but i'll have to write this so be on the lookout for the latest version of the notes i should probably be done in maybe one hour 30 or 90 minutes trying to rewrite this stuff so that we end up basically what you're supposed to end up with you're supposed to come up with an expression where there will be it's it's similar to what we had before because you'd have the v square this side then you have got your g r multiplied by tan theta so this side you'd you'd have v squared is equal to g r tan theta which is exactly as much as it doesn't look the same which is just exactly what we found up here this expression here v squared is equal to g r tan theta can you see that that the two expressions for the banking and for this other thing they're exactly the same so i need to show that properly then after that once you have your expression then the the other bit you've just putting in numbers that's just simple substitution there so basically that's where we come to end so when you do a calculation you get your banking angle to be 30 degrees okay so basically yeah uh be on the lookout i will i need to spend another one hour 30 i think to properly rewrite the last two bits on the banking and also on that rope thing any question uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. So, sir, can we safely say that uh, as long as our 
a question given does not involve friction force. Can we be using this same expression even without showing those uh, on how it came about? I don't know. Uh, so I, I'm trying to show you how you come up with something. So basically, it's a whole game of trying to identify which force is providing centripetal force. Yeah, I mean in such a situation where we know we can apply this, do we need to show how this expression was derived? No, I don't think... You, you see, the other question you have to ask yourself is, do I have time to see at what the stuff you are supposed to be doing? I don't have the time. Because... Guess what? You guys are a lot. So it's not going to be necessary for you to show. You will have to work it out. But we are only going to be interested in your answers. Whether it's A, B, or if it's numerical, we just want the final answer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, because you guys are. You are, you are is, is it more than 2000 or something like that? Yes, yes. Yeah, so if we're going to mark your waking and everything, we'll never finish marking your results. And you never get your results. And by the way, the reason why you got your school is because you want results. So that you can get your degree and become the doctor you want to become. Okay, so. What you are trying to do here is to show you how you come up with something. Even if you forget, you can still come up with it. You can still reconstruct stuff. If you see, if you see an expression, some formula which has been given there, if it, you, can, you know where it comes from. That's where the physics is. That's how we are saying that from the physics, it looks like the banked example and the one where something is hanging from a rope, they are one and the same thing. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? Questions? We have come to the end. Okay, so if there are no questions, we'll stop here. Uh, let me continue to modify the notes. These last two examples, uh, those last two pages, let me modify the notes properly so that you can see exactly how things are. And yeah, that's going to be that. So basically, the centipedal part is going to be done. We are done with the, cent with, with the centipedal thing. So the next thing we're going to do when we meet next week, uh, I don't. you guys are at its advantage because your classes are on Thursday and friday and on friday you've got that quiz i think i don't know what it's from what time to what time but maybe you can attend the class and later on do the quiz at night i don't know how you're going to do it but uh there are other classes i teach i think i teach group o i meet them on monday and thursday so maybe you watch videos but uh, i still encourage people to attend class yeah. So what, what what group did you say we can attend? What? No, 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 no. I'm not saying you attend another group. No, I'm no, saying I'm asking, like this we're, having, this we're having the quiz on Friday. Mm. What other group do you think that you can attend the class that you'll be teaching that day? You know, uh, uh that is uh group I. No, no, group O. Alright, sir. So I teach group O on Monday and uh, on Thursday morning. So Thursday at, at, at 8 hours. So usually we wake up where we are, where is. So we teach on Monday and also 8 hours if you're, if you're able to manage waking up at 8 hours, which I doubt. Because we are used to doing that ourselves. So sorry, uh, maybe helping us, you should just make sure you update the notes before that time so that you can be able to follow. No, the notes are already updated. It's only this bit. The other bit for next week, all the notes are there. They're not going to be changed because I recently updated them. So if you want to read ahead of time, that's fine. You can just go and read. I'm sure most of my notes can be... People can follow the notes if you're just reading them. So just download the notes, then you can read ahead and stuff like that. 
Yes, worthy. Okay. Any other question? Sir, yes. Does that mean even final exam will be multiple choice like test one? Yeah. Mod, uh, final exam will be like test one. Uh, oh my goodness. It's going to be multiple uh, choice uh, and. Uh, I'm talking about test one. Are we supposed to have test two before the exam? Of course, you're supposed to have test two. That will be physical, like before we start the exams, or it will be online looking at the way things are right now. I don't know. We are not yet there. <laughs> so we'll see how things evolve. Alright, All right, sir. Yeah. Well, the only thing I know is that test two is going to be like test one. Whether it's physical or not, I don't know. But physical makes sense. So that you don't cheat, you don't lie, you don't sit in groups. Yes. Because also you have to remember that uh when you come for your exam, it's not you're not going to write the exams everybody at the same time. You're going to write your exams in phases. So first years are going to come. Then first years will write a physical exam. So basically you have like, I don't know whether you're going to have two weeks. So that maybe the first week you do all the tests, all the test twos. Then after that, the next two weeks, you probably not just two weeks. In the first week, you probably do your test, test twos. The next one week, you do your, your, five, your exam. So you write all your exams probably, I think, in five days. Yeah, the first five days you write your tests probably. If not five days, then maybe three weeks. But I'm sure the first five days you write your tests. The other five days you're going to write your exams. So everything will be over in ten days. So there will be no time for you to study basically. That's what I'm saying. So the studying will have to be done ahead of time while you're at home. If you think you're going to study in December when you come, you are just lying to yourself. It will not be possible for you to study. The only thing you'll be doing is you go write a test, you are very tired, you are hungry, you cook, you sleep. The following day, you write another test. <laughs> My God. Okay, see you <laughs> next week. Have a good night. Good night, sir. All right. <laughs> Ah. That's the way things are. That's well, the way. Well, well, Yo, your fellow, well, your fellow doctors, you have seen how they are working the COVID ones. <laughs> so why should you work any less? <laughs> yeah. So you are just you are practicing for the future. Okay. See you oh, next week. Practice. All right.